Oh, hello. Today we're talking about random walk subsurface scattering. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly, coming at you from, from here in middle of Illinois. <laughs> Now, despite the weird name, random walk subsurface scattering has nothing to do with walking or animation or anything. It's actually a shader model for the subsurface scattering node. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about what subsurface scattering is and how the new random walk model differs from the existing models. Let's first start off with explaining subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is when light passes through an object that is normally opaque. This is usually seen on very fleshy or very thin materials, such as plastics or, you know, skin. You can see a prime example of subsurface scattering right here. Even though my hand is opaque and light doesn't usually travel through it, you can still see a little bit of an orange glow coming through. This is a type of volumetric scattering known as subsurface scattering. So that's what subsurface scattering is, and because of how many situations it needs to be used in, there are a bunch of different models that work for it, so we're going to be comparing those with the new random walk model. Now, specifically we're going to be looking at what's called the christensen burley model, which is the default subsurface scattering model in Blender. So as I said earlier, the christensen burley method is an approximated version of a physically based volumetric scattering system, uh, which makes it really good for general use. You can use it in just about anything, and it looks pretty good. But the random walk system implements a few different features that this doesn't have. So the first pro is that the random walk method is way better at handling curved and thin objects than the christensen burley method. So if you're going to be working with something with a lot of curves or a lot of thin pieces, such as like the inside of your nose or like ears or stuff like that, you might want to opt for the random walk method. Additionally, it's much better at preserving fine details. So in some circumstances, you might lose detail using the christensen burley method because it kind of smooths everything out, but the random walk method will help to keep those details so they're apparent in your final render. But of course, when there are pros, there must be cons. So here are some of the cons of the random walk method. For one, it takes a little bit longer to render and you'll need more samples. So you'll, and your end result will be a little bit noisier unless you, of course, crank up the amount of samples that you're taking. This can be a huge setback, especially when working with animations, but really in my experience, it wasn't that bad. And one thing to keep in mind is that it works best on closed meshes. So if you have a mesh like a, a cup or a bowl and it has an open top that's just like letting stuff in, it's not gonna work very well. Instead, you have to close that mesh down and then it should work a little bit better. So with that being said, I wanted to compare these two and see exactly how they differed. So I did that by pulling a few different models off the internet, applying the christensen burley method to one and applying the random walk method to another. Here are what the results looked like. So I think those results are pretty conclusive. You can really see the differences between the two different types of subsurface scattering, uh, and it's definitely something interesting to look into. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something new about this really awesome Blender feature, and I'll see you guys next time. You know, real talk here. I'm running out of different ways to say go to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription, because I've said that like 10 times now, and I, I just I need more things. Hola, me llamo Grant y estoy tu presentador. Ahora, vamos a aprender sobre Random Walk SSS en Blender.